Hey, Matt Noyce, good to be with you in this uh, first edition of How Rusty Can a Guy Get After Five Days, right? Uh, things are going good. I hope things are going well for you. It's nice to see you again. And, uh, you know, I kind of had to come and be with you for just a little bit because of the storm that's coming up in the midweek this week. You know I couldn't say nothing about that. <laughs> I'll also say a little bit about what's been going on around here. We're, uh, we've got a lot of build going on here. Danielle and I have been hard at work over the course of the past five days. I don't miss waking up at 1.30 in the morning, but we've still been working awfully hard. So um, website is just about ready to roll out. So you'll, uh, you'll see some social media posts from me about that one and from Danielle about that one. Uh, app is coming along nicely. It's going to take just a little bit longer, as you might imagine, to build out, but it won't be too much longer. And then remember, this is a dual pronged approach. So on one hand, it's the videos, it's the, uh, it's the forecast from us and from from veteran meteorologists as uh, more folks come on board. The other part of that too, though, is going to be the fact that we are trying to get better data, right? So it was an honor and a privilege to spearhead and conceptualize the NBC forecast system over the past 10 years. And of course, that's theirs. I leave it with NBC and I'm so happy it'll continue to guide them. Uh, so this is a ground up brand new build and there's a lot of new technology to work with. There's the artificial intelligence that's been introduced now. There's a lot of their processing and computing power that's going on. So that type of a build, the data build, that takes a long time, but little by little you make progress. So everything is in a building phase. And with that, I want to make sure that I at least can get you over to the weather maps and show you a little bit of what's been going on. So let's go ahead and switch over now, show you what's happening with, first of all, the water vapor loop. So this water vapor loop, water vapor is a great tracer in the atmosphere. It's the satellite shot, but it picks up on where there's water that's being pushed around in the air. And so there's a couple of things you can pick out. At the top of the screen, I can circle for you here one of the areas of energy. When you see spin in the atmosphere, that represents energy, and there's a lot of it right now that's coming down into central Canada. There's also a lot of it that's feeding up through the Pacific Ocean, bringing with it Pacific moisture, now starting to tap the Gulf of Mexico. So you've got two big players on the map when it comes to energy. And you know what? The weather bell depiction here of energy in the atmosphere really does do a nice job picking up. We call it vorticity in the world of meteorology. There's your northern one that's coming down out of Canada. Here's a couple of pieces of southern energy that are also loaded as we looked at with moisture. And here they are coming together. Where do they meet? When do they meet? This is Tuesday evening. They're coming together over the Great Lakes. More energy still feeding in out of the Pacific, and that makes its way into this thing so that it really ends up a very potent, powerful system by the time we get to Wednesday night. Now, usually, storm development happens on the leading edge to the energy, and this will happen that way uh, this time around, too. So by Wednesday evening, the storm center is actually coming off the eastern seaboard. It's passing over or near southern New England. It continues to move along. And by the time we get to Thursday, the surface storm mostly has moved through, but the energy is still overhead, which will keep some of the snow going and rain going for a little bit longer. So what it, which is it? Is it snow or rain? Well, here's a look at sea level pressure. And we're starting with right now. There is a big high pressure dome that's building uh, over what we call James Bay on the south side of Hudson Bay. That is full of cool air. You've got a number of low pressure centers. In fact, you've got severe weather that's going on across the plain states this evening with that uh, storm center. Notice there's other little waves of low pressure that ride out ahead of it. Basically, these are traveling along the leading edge to warmer air. If you go through over time and we play out what's going to happen, I'll go to Tuesday, for example, and you'll see the area of high pressure is bigger, stronger. Why is that important? It's going to be full of the cold air. That's what provides cold air to feed down into New England. Here's that storm center developing. Remember, we looked at the energy in the Great Lakes, the surface storm, the barometric pressure gets deeper and deeper. And by the time we get along about Wednesday. Here's that new storm center developing along the eastern seaboard. This is right about noontime on Wednesday. With that, let me change the view. There's the cold air. You've got the cold that's bottled up over Hudson Bay and James Bay. It's ready to feed down. It certainly isn't here yet. But as that storm develops, and this is the map at about eight o'clock on Wednesday evening, as the storm is developing, notice the wind feeding into its center. That is at least bringing not a due northerly wind. It's not going to be this feed uh, of air that comes directly from that cold center, but rather it's a northeasterly wind that develops and it kind of drains that area. In. So I play out through time. We get into Thursday morning at 5 a.m. There's the storm center now sitting south of New England. Here's the wind feeding in. Some of your worst wind is going to come in the Wednesday night, Thursday morning time frame. 
the Wednesday night part, not only at the coastline, but also when you get into the hilly terrain. And particularly, you'll notice the stronger winds that show up 20 to 25 mile per hour sustained at 5 a.m. on Thursday. But uh, you're going to have much higher gusts on the western slopes of the Berkshires and western slopes of the Green Mountains overnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. It really even starting Wednesday on the western slopes of the mountains. Here comes the storm center. It's making its way near the islands, perhaps right over the island of Nantucket. As it continues to strengthen, it rips in a northeast wind along the coast during the day on Thursday. This is approaching midday and into the early afternoon Thursday. Now you've got a due northerly wind. Your cold air is coming in. But admittedly, by that point, a lot of your moisture is starting to taper down just a little bit. So what I can do is I can bring it back over to a sea, uh, to a, 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 a wind gust prog here and show you what's going to be happening in terms of maximum gusts. Notice that we've got maximum gusts by Thursday that are on the order of 50 to 60 miles per hour that are showing up on the western slopes of the Greens and the western slopes of the Berkshires. You're seeing some similar gusts possible through central portions of Massachusetts in the hilly terrain and up into the Monadnock region. And finally, near the coast, where in southeastern Mass, gusts may hit 60 to 70 miles per hour sometime early on Thursday as that storm center goes by just off the coast. There are your 70 to 80 mile per hour gusts that are sitting out over the ocean. So it's a very potent storm that comes through. As you would imagine, it's going to churn the seas. Thursday morning seas, 23 to 26 feet just outside of Boston Harbor, 20 to 23 feet near the buoy, and probably running about 16 to 20 feet when you get closer to shore. I can zoom in a little bit more for you, and you can get a little bit more detail. Cape Ann getting into the 20 to 23 foot seas, sitting just outside of Gloucester and Rockport. Look, you combine this uh, with a tide, and of course, you've got a storm surge. In fact, this graph shows you the forecast tide heights in black. HAT is highest astronomical tide. When you exceed that, you're usually going to end up with some sort of coastal flooding. This is at a Thursday morning high tide, likely to find at least minor coastal flooding. We'll watch for anything more than that. You've got a four foot storm surge that's forecast to come in on Thursday morning. Thankfully, the tidal levels weren't forecast to be that high astronomically. So you do avoid a little bit of what you could have with a situation with coastal flooding. But nonetheless, it's something you want to be paying close attention to. If you live along the coastline, a lot of the vulnerable spots will probably be seeing some coastal flooding with that. I want to show you the uh, radar forecast here as we head through the upcoming storm. This is just a loop of it all the way through. By the way, you might be seeing little hints of what's coming. The One Degree Outside Weather Network, a noise meteorolo meteorology collaborative there in the lower left. So yeah, you do get a little bit of a, kind of a peel back of the curtain as to what we're working on. But What's happening here with regard to the predicted radar, this is Wednesday afternoon. It really is going to be Wednesday afternoon that things begin to take off. I can go back in time. And on Tuesday night, there is some light precipitation. This is 8 p.m. Tuesday, snow and blue, rain and green. Certainly, you can see that we're dealing with a decent amount that's coming down, but it should be fairly light in its intensity. And notice it goes away. This is Wednesday, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Not a lot going on for the Wednesday morning commute. And then we get back into this again as we had during the day Wednesday at Phil in. We've got an issue with snow that's coming down across uh, much of New Hampshire. You also have the red indicating where we've got a mixture of snow and sleet, some freezing rain that's possible in pink as we continue to go through. You'll see that that mix area actually does expand. This is Wednesday night at about 930 in the evening. So you're snowing pretty heavily along parts of the Route 2 corridor at this point. I think when you get to Gardner and Athol and Winchenden, you've got snow that's coming down steadily and heavily. That's the case through the Monadnock region to Newfin, Brattleboro, Vermont. You're filling it in through central New Hampshire, and you've got a mix that's coming when you get around the Massachusetts Turnpike. And if you get south of Boston, there's probably not a lot of mix that comes into play. What's the mix going on up and down the greens? Signs of warm air aloft that will likely cause some amount of sleet to mix in. At times, you can see that trying to happen through Grafton County and across the White Mountains. It's more unlikely to happen in southern Maine, western Maine, areas along Route 16. This is the map. You can see the time stamp there in the upper left. This is now the map overnight, Wednesday night early Thursday morning. And as we play things through, yeah, you might have a hard time bringing that uh, that cold air down to Boston or Brockton, but you should be able by, when, by Thursday morning to end this thing with some snow kind of snapping back to the coastline for that matter as well. So this is going to be a lot of what we pay attention to in terms of the evolution of the storm. But one of the things I think is important to point out is you are all snow, and I'll go back to playing the loop again, 
you're all snow for this event, essentially from the lakes region to the White Mountains. It's the places that got hit hard out of the last storm. So you say, well, how much are we going to get? It's a pretty decent amount of moisture that comes out of the sky. I mean, you're talking about total precipitation amounts on the order of two inches. Now, admittedly, because the temperatures are marginal, it's different from the last one. The last storm we got was that real kind of, uh, you almost ended up with, it was almost a drier, fluffier consistency snow for some of you across the mountains because you had so much of that uh, cold air that was in place. This isn't like that. You don't have dew points or going down below zero leading into the storm like you did last time. This is a heavier, wetter snow that poses some problems, right? Because here you go. Here's your total snow expectation the way that, that we see it right now. About an 8 to 18 inch snowfall with locally higher amounts. It's going to be somewhat elevation dependent. Some of those higher amounts will definitely be when you get into Oxford County, Maine, uh, when you get into Franklin County, when you make your way into places like uh, like Northern Carroll County, uh, perhaps into Grafton County, uh, you're going to be most vulnerable to this because you're going to hold on to the cold the most. You may end up again with that sleet mixture across parts of Vermont, which is why particularly on the western slopes of the greens. The other thing is you get what we call down sloping. The air comes over the mountain, comes down the other side, and air going down is the opposite of what you need to make a decent amount of snow or a decent amount of precipitation, the air going up. Now in the Boston area, you'll see we have light snow possible, mostly rain until you start getting up to maybe about Burlington on I-95, then you get some snow likely. You've got two inches plus possible. To be very candid with you, you've got solutions in Worcester that range from almost nothing to 16 inches right now. So we do believe certainly there'll be more in the Worcester Hills, for example, than there would be as you go farther to the north. I have another, this is our forecast, but I have another depiction for you that I think you might find interesting. Let me swing over here. Oh, this is fun. This is the uh, the freezing level, all right? So how far up is the freezing, are the freezing temperatures? So you can see this is going to be on Wednesday at about 5 p.m., excuse me, about 9 p.m. You've got about 100, 200 meters off the ground that you've got the, uh, the freezing level. So in other words, snow is is just sitting at about 300 to 400 feet off the ground. Well, as we go on through time and we head into the overnight Wednesday night, notice that freezing level gets really high in places like Southeastern Mass, even Boston, 300 to 500 meters. So you're on the order of probably about 900 to about 1500 feet off the ground. So there's, it's not gonna be snowing in Boston during the first part of the night, Wednesday night, the way it looks right now. But notice what happens farther to the north. If we come up anywhere north of Concord, New Hampshire, this is all a freezing level that might as well be right at ground level. I can zoom you out a little bit more and you'll see, look at that, all of northern New England kind of fits into that. That's why I'm saying, look, this is going to be a winter storm, a substantial and major winter storm. Again, the second one that we've had over the course of as many weeks that unfolds across a lot of the northern half of New England. This is just another uh, another depiction, another model that's, uh, that's a prediction that actually is uh, coming out of Europe, but I think it's doing a pretty good job of getting a big, broad 8 to 12 inch snow around Manchester to Concord. What's interesting is that as you get down toward the Boston area, there's a three or four inch snow at Lowell in the 495 quarter. I'm not convinced that that's necessarily going to stick as much as three to four inches in this zone, largely because we're talking about what's going to be that milder kind of marginal temperature air that comes in. So if you look at actual snow depth forecasts, you'll see very little is predicted to form right along the coastline or, or accumulate right along the coastline. Then as you start getting up and along 495, now you're on on the order of about two or three inches, perhaps. And then when you start getting up into the mountains, when you start getting up into northern New England, this is where snow depth uh, increases are on the order of anywhere between eight to 18 inches of snow, which matches up pretty closely with the forecast I was just giving you. So forecast total snow depth increase uh, certainly can make it a difference there. So that's where I think we're at right now in terms of how this storm is going to unfold. There's still a couple of days to go. One of the things that I would certainly uh, say is that there's a lot that can still change in terms of the thermal profile, the temperature profile, the atmosphere. Someplace like uh, even Boston and Worcester, uh, although it doesn't seem like you'll likely be in line for a major whopping of snow like we get across northern New England. Admittedly, this is a matter of right now the forecast for someplace like Boston is about 37 degrees. So, I mean, if you're off by about three, three and a half degrees, you, you got a major change to the forecast, which does not look to be exceedingly likely. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I like to leave no stone unturned. So that is one of the things we'll be keeping a close eye on. So that's the way it looks for now. If you love these technical discussions, I hope that this has been something that you very much enjoyed. I certainly, as you know, love bringing it to you. That's why even with everything kind of still being built and not ready quote to go. I wanted to make sure to give you the update. So that's where we're at for now. I hope you stay safe. I will provide you another update before the storm hits. Certainly have a great night.